Gil, welcome to Virginia Homegrown. And we have a mutual friend, Erlene Hogue, and she's been telling me about your garden for years. So I'm so excited to have you on the show. So tell us a little bit about your garden, please. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy to be here to share. Um, well, when we built our house, we, we didn't want to spoil the beauty of what was already here, the huge trees. And um, that's been my guideline all along, not to spoil what's already here. So uh, there, a big beech tree had fallen in this spot and we thought that was a natural clearing for the tree and it was in a great spot, so that's what we decided to do. But we had to have a septic system. And so we did have to cut some trees and then we had to cover that area with something. We started out with a lawn and every time a husband would mow the grass, he would blow seeds and in, into the garden areas and that didn't do. So we took out the lawn and uh, tried to grow moss there, but it, it's a little too sunny for moss to do very well. So it's evolved into a, a pathway, a winding pathway through the whole drain area. And I don't think I've caused any problem to the septic system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what, what guided you on your plant choices? Well, I had initially had the help of Denise Green, who is a landscape designer specializing in native plants. And she helped me with some of the design and some of the selections. So I do have some non-natives that are favorites and I couldn't stand to leave them out. But Denise suggested these service berries, uh, also known as shad blow. And they are just gorgeous when they're blooming. And now in May, they have their fruits and the birds we hope we'll share some of them with us. They're, uh, <laughs> they're red, not blue, but they taste a lot like a blueberry. They're, they're oh, very good and they're very pretty. Also, when the May apples emerge in April, they just transform the floor of the forest. Everything is brown, leaves, dead, and then the May apples come, out, come up like little umbrellas and just cover the floor. And eventually, you know, in a week's time, the whole floor is green. They're a beautiful yes. spring ephemeral because they come up, they grow, they create this carpet, they bloom, they fruit, they and they're gone. <laughs> they do. <laughs> yeah. And then the uh, and then the jack in the pulpits come up, and yes. we have lots of those, and those those are fun too. That's a favorite um, of mine. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And even early earlier than the May apples are the bloodroot. Yeah, I love the bloodroot. Do you have any azaleas, native azaleas? I do. I have several native azaleas and also some hybrid Xperia azaleas, uh, all deciduous azaleas. They and they are gorgeous. I have orange and pink and white and yellow, and um, they're they're fragrant as well. All the flowers are near the top because the deer munch on the lower leaves. But yes. That's okay. I have plenty of things I can plant in front of them at the base. There you go. <laughs> well, she yes. must have made some wonderful choices with you because I understand you were supposed to be on Garden Week this year. Yes, I was. And it took a year getting ready for it. And uh, now it looks like it might be another year getting ready for it. I'm, I think I'll be there next year, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But you know, with all the plants that you're naming, it sounds like you also have a lot of wildlife. You must have a lot of insects and a lot of birds and just a very yes, active garden. We do. You may be able to hear the birds now. Uh, and the frogs, of course, we have the, uh, the gray tree frogs and the green tree frogs. Um, when I was down on my hands and knees weeding the moss, I discovered the little red clover mite, which is tiny, 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 but so bright and colorful. And the, then there's the green, the six spotted tiger beetle that is a bright emerald green. Well, it sounds like your garden's active as well as beautiful. It is. I'm sure you incorporated some features into your garden as well. So what are some of the features that you, you enjoy? Well, um, the area got so large that I wanted to divide it into different rooms, they call rooms. So mm -hmm. I have the, the sunny area next to the pergola, which I can grow some uh, more sun-loving perennials. And um, then I bought this beautiful Carolina silver bell and made that the center of my moon garden. So in the moon garden, there's nothing but white blooming flowers. And besides the Carolina silver bell, I have foam flower, dwarf crested iris, 
have several varieties of daffodils, bloodroot, epimedium, several different anemones, and a fringe tree. And then we, um, I wanted something for the children, so I started a little miniature garden. I even have some miniature ferns in there, some spleen warts that are, that are really pretty. And then there was the moss garden. Behind the house, there was a, a creek, and we decided to dam the creek and build a pond. And so I blew the leaves off a little to create a path going back to the pond. And soon, very soon, moss grew on that path. And I love the moss. And so every time I would blow leaves, I would blow more and more. And so now it is a huge moss garden. And it's wonderful in the winter because you you look out and there's just the sea of green. That sounds love lovely. <laughs> yeah, that sounds lovely. Do you have any elements of your garden to add sound into it? Well, I do. I have, um, I have under the pergola, we built a fountain with what they call a rain curtain. Oh. And the, the water just falls into this pool and makes a, a wonderful soothing sound. Um, the only problem with the rain curtain and the fountain is we have a lot of tree frogs. And the tree frogs <laughs> love to get into the fountain and lay eggs. And then we have tadpoles and they don't go very well with the fountain. So we have to scoop out all the tadpoles, take them down to the pond, let them go. And then I can hear a tree frog right now. And uh, then we can cover it up to keep the frogs out. Well, it sounds like you've had a lot of successes, but have you had any failures that you want to share? Because we all like to hear uh, about, you know. I have made some poor choices. Um, Japanese black bamboo, uh, for one. Equisetum as an, was another. Uh, right now, I'm battling lizard tail. And mm -hmm. lizard tail is a native plant, and it evidently loves it here. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm having a real problem getting rid of that. And um, it's because it's intergrown with the uh, Solomon seal and the Acorus and the oh every, everything. It's a mess. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. You just you have to tease out those white roots and kind of pull them before they break, right? Oh, there's no teasing. There's digging them up. They're, they're as big as my finger. They're huge and they're wow. deep. Well, do you have any favorite plants in your garden? Well, I love the ferns. I love the ferns, and when we built that, uh, when we built the dam, there were so many ferns growing along the creek that had to be rescued. So I, I dug them up and lugged them up the hill in five-gallon buckets and planted them all around the area. And of course, there were already lots of the Christmas ferns here, but uh, now I have thousands, and they're just beautiful. I have the Venus or Southern Maidenhair fern that I got from my Aunt Pat, and I just love that one, and that has really taken off. That is so delicate mm -hmm. and uh, not, not evergreen like the Christmas ferns, but I love that one. And then there's the Autumn fern. That is yes. evergreen, and it has that beautiful new red foliage in the spring, which is so pretty. It's very upright and really makes a statement. The, it's a great um, landscape plant too. It's easy to grow in a landscape too. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. It's so pretty. Um, another one that I love is the Dixie wood ferns. And I um, put a tape measure on them the other day and they are five feet, six inches tall. Oh my. <laughs> they love it there. <laughs> they do. The cinnamon fern, that's also five feet, six. Good gracious. Yeah. And there's a, a crazy one called Korean tassel fern that yes. has these furry looking stems as they emerge and uh, such pretty shiny leaves when they fill out. Yes, I know that fern, it's it beautiful. Does. Well, you have just enticed me to wanna to come down and see your garden even more now. <laughs> I wanna thank you so much for sharing the story of your garden and also sharing your passion for ferns with us. And. Um, <laughs> Just uh, to me, you've encouraged people that they can have an original idea and they can change as the conditions determine them, you know, mm -hmm. what really does work. And you've been so flexible in doing that. And as a gardener, that's half of it and also half the fun. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>